This next part of the series is where you get to hear some real-life stories from people who are explaining the real impacts of climate change. thing we've also learned is as you put more pollution into the air and it gets collected in the water droplets it'll go into the water sources and water supplies not just drinking water <clears throat> but natural rivers and and into lakes and into the ocean so this air pollution from burning coal to power this city there uh, will pollute the air and the soil and the water Climate change disproportionately affects low-income and marginalized communities, such as communities of color, but the resources to mitigate those effects are not funneled into those communities. Imagine having to deal with contaminated soil where your kids can't go outside and play, and contaminated air, which you just can't avoid, and not having the resources to deal with that, and so you just continue to get sick. It upsets me. Sometimes I feel like there's very little I can do about it. A lot of the work I do on campus is about environmental injustice, and it's upsetting because it's not as unintentional as people think. And when you're talking about solutions to environmental problems, why is it that often these voices are left out of the conversation? Why aren't there more black and brown faces and people from the low income communities or people living next to a coal fire plant in the conversations about the solutions to climate change? Like, where are they? It's a good question. I would tell Illinois lawmakers to make sure that they're listening and including the communities that they're going to while switching to clean energy. I don't understand why we have to fight for clean air and clean water. We need clean air to live. It's time to take action, and we need to do something about it. One of the best ways to start is by voting. We are the next generation. We're going to be the future politicians and scientists and activists. And so it's important for young people to go out and vote so they have their voices heard. And they make a statement like, this is what I believe in, this is what I'm fighting for, and I'm not going to support someone who is against that. That's what this country is all about. My name is Brandon Kirk. I'm a sixth generation farmer. I'm from Kennesaw, Georgia. We've been on this land since uh, before the Civil War. We have to feed the chickens, we feed the pigs, we come out every day, uh, water them, we also collect eggs every day. I started to see the effects of climate change really happening in my backyard. Most people don't understand how climate change can affect both flooding and drought, but that's what's been happening in Georgia. It's made it harder for us to produce and be able to consistently provide crops to a market. Well, I think it's really important to advocate to people about climate change and its effects because once you know, it, it really changes your life. My dad and I are a part of uh, Cobb County Farm Bureau, and our focus is really going out to classrooms and educating them about agriculture, climate change, ways that they can help. It's really important for you to know about climate change and care about it because one day we will be the future leaders and we're the ones that are going to go out and vote and make policy and we're the ones that are going to make a change. 
when you're hearing that again, when you get to the age of 18, you have to vote. You have to vote for people who are going to make these changes. Uh, but something he said about what's happening in Georgia that's affecting the farming is when it floods, it's worse. And when there's less water and, and there's drought, it's worse. Worse than ever. So the droughts are longer and drier and the flooding is more. And we're seeing that here in Washington too with uh, the all the rain we're getting. And as the planet warms, we're going to get more rain and less snow. Our winters will get warmer as the planet warms up. So that's another example. that climate change is some far-off problem, but it's not. It's happening right here and right now, and we're living with it.